Greetings, lover of monotonous narration of Wikipedia articles accompanied by slowly moving images. Today I will tell you about Spider-Man web shooters. Web shooters of Spider-Man are one of the most unique devices in the world of superheroes. In various adaptations, web shooters have had different natures. For example, in the Sam Raimi trilogy, Spider-Man had organic web shooters that grew on his wrists. However, we are specifically interested in their mechanical variation, which is canonical from the comics. In this issue, we will try to understand how Peter Parker's mechanical web shooters work and explore the feasibility of this device in our world and its potential effectiveness. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it motivates me to make even more videos. To fully understand the principles of web shooters, the creators themselves can help us. Official concept arts depicting the appearance and function of web shooters can be found on the internet. Honestly, all the information that can be seen on them is quite secondary, because the full understanding of the device's operation can only be achieved in motion. Nevertheless, the general concept is clear. There is a reservoir of webbing called web cartridges in which the liquid is stored to produce the web. It is claimed that one such capsule can contain up to several hundred meters of cable. Multiple of these capsules are attached to each web shooter, which are strapped around the wrists of the Spider-Man, and they are recharged as the liquid in the capsule is used. There is a reloading mechanism for changing the cartridge, which I understood to be semi-automatic. The firing mechanism is represented in the form of a copper wire with a button at one end and a fastening point to the web shooter at the other. Of course, almost everything works on electronics, as indicated by the transistor and lithium battery. Apparently, the device somehow relies on the biometric data of its wearer, but I can't say anything more detailed about this. Another interesting detail of the web shooter is the anticoagulant module. Considering that anticoagulants are substances that prevent blood clotting, in the context of using such a module in the web shooter's mechanism, it can prevent premature hardening of the web for example. It is also quite likely that this module contains a solution that dissolves spider silk. Why is it needed? In order to separate sections of the spider web, for example, when moving through the city. As we know, spider silk is a very strong substance, so it is unlikely that such a thread could be severed with a blade or by hand, but this is just my assumption. I still do not fully understand the question of what forces are involved in shooting spider webs. I don't see any pneumatic systems or compressors in the device, so the conclusion is that the shot occurs under the pressure inside the container with the spider silk. By the way, in the comics, Spider-Man even carried capsules with extra web fluid on his belt, but is it possible to create such a mechanism in real life? Well, if we don't go into details, the general principle can be repeated, which is what shitmakers on YouTube do regularly. Most likely, the device will not be as elegant and compact as in the movie, but it will perform its tasks in any case. This is not so important, because more than half of the functionality of web shooters lies not in the mechanism of ejecting the web, but in the web itself. It is much more interesting to find out how realistic Spider-Man's web is. The question is actually very curious. And given that the liquid was created on the basis of Oscorp's cable, which in turn was obtained from the web of genetically modified spiders, it is even more interesting. In reality, work has been underway for a long time to extract spider silk in commercial quantities. The reasons for this are exactly the same as in the movie Spider-Man. The web is actually a strong and highly stretchable material. It is known that a spider's thread is so strong that if it were woven into a rope as thick as a pencil, it would hold a tank starting or a Boeing taking off, which is two times stronger than steel. Add to this the airiness and increased elasticity, and the web has repeated isometry, which means that the web thread does not twist when twisted in the same direction, that is, Spider-Man can hang on the web as much as he wants and it will not twist. Therefore, when we see how Spider-Man stops a train or catches a car over an abyss, do not be surprised, a real web as thick as in the film is actually capable of taking on such loads. It is easy to understand that with such properties, spider silk will be applicable in many places, for example, it can be used to make a super light and at the same time durable bulletproof vest, which is comparable in weight to a heavy winter down jacket, or your mother's panties. But why don't we still use the web everywhere? Because scientists have not yet figured out how to obtain this material in large volumes. 
Attempts to simply harvest a bunch of spiders were unsuccessful because the maintenance of the spiders is too expensive, they weave webs very little, and arachnids cannot coexist in colonies as they constantly hunt each other, which exacerbates the breeding situation. However, some progress in this field has been achieved by scientists from the Kyoto University's Higher Engineering School. They have created a liquid made of artificial protein, which resembles spider silk. This liquid quickly transforms into a rigid and structurally complex silk, and after experimenting with the acidity of the environment, they were able to achieve protein transformation into a material similar to spider silk. In terms of all its properties, the description of the experiments conducted by scientists are very similar to that artificial webbing for web shooters from the movie. Therefore, in theory, it is highly probable that in the near future, it will be possible to create a complete analog of a web shooter even in our world. But will it be possible to use such a thing for its intended purpose? An ordinary person will not be able to use web shooters, of course, at least to fly in the same way as Spider-Man, that's for sure. And it's not just that an ordinary person cannot stick to a vertical surface, but that the musculoskeletal system and ligaments of an ordinary person cannot withstand such a load, and this despite the fact that the location of the web shooters on the wrists is quite convenient and the center of gravity of our body is in the butt, and therefore the arms form a convenient lever for giving the body inertia. Just remember the bungee and, for example, lower primates. Any chimpanzee will calmly jump from branch to branch like Spider-Man. The thing is that his musculature is so strong that he can easily tear off his hand to an ordinary person, and even the strongest people will never be able to achieve such strength indicators, and Spider-Man is generally a mutant capable of taking tens of tons on his body, so when in his case, the use of the web is quite justified. However, there is one moment that really strains me so much. Why does Spider-Man never stick to his web? He holds on to it with his hands. Let's say that his skin has some kind of special molecular composition, okay? He's a mutant, but the spandex for his suit is the most ordinary. This is, of course, a big jam in all the films, because somehow only those threads of the web that are closer to the ends opposite from the palm of the hand are sticky, although in reality the web will be sticky and our hero will stick to it either it will not be sticky at all. Or Spider-Man's gloves are impregnated with some special compound that prevents sticking to the web. Options are like that as a result, the web shooter is, in theory, quite a real device in the near future, but ordinary people will not be able to use it as in Spider-Man films this is an extremely traumatic thing that will knock out your shoulder joints tear your ligaments and muscles, and can also severely injure your spine. As for combat applications, it is more likely that the web will be used for defense rather than offense. It could be used to create lightweight bulletproof suits or something similar. But most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. After all, this is how you help me make even more interesting videos for a slowly moving images. Goodbye.